again, we want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Make sure that you've got something in your glass as you're zipping along with Fred. Tell us what you're drinking. And I'm mute. I was muted the whole time I was talking. Now, listen, you just missed out on something really good that only I heard. So I'll start over. <laughs> Welcome to Mocha Madness, the finale. Here we go. This is a celebration of the Mocha Stave in Maker's Mark. Now, Crump Crumplers tell me I just went dead. I'm assuming he's talking about my mic. Now, <laughs> I I was going in and out of talking during the intro, and I I forgot I muted myself. It, it's this is hilarious. This is like this is the best thing. Uh, this is the best thing that I could have done. I'm gonna do that from now on. I'm gonna mute myself and just keep talking. But anyway, so tonight is a celebration of the Mocha Stave. Uh, Maker's Mark is retiring the Mocha Stave. They are uh, basically moving on to bigger and better things in their opinion. But the Mocha Stave was really, really popular in the private selection program. And we've already done one round. We did the first round uh, last night. And so this will be the second and probably the finale of it. I'll probably be able to finish it all tonight. And don't forget we have a member-only call-in show uh, coming up after after this so 
uh, if you've got, you know, tonight, I want tonight to be fun. I want it to be interactive. Um, you know, like David says, mute looks good on me. You know what? Maybe it does. So maybe I should mute myself more often. My wife's probably like, damn, how do I mute him? You won't shut up. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. So I got to say, I want to know what you're drinking. Uh, I want to, uh, I want to know what you're celebrating tonight. If you've got a birthday, if you've got an anniversary, um, you know, if you're just celebrating, you know, good health and the fact that you got a job and all that, that's awesome too. Put it in the chat. I want to, I want to, um, I want to definitely, definitely celebrate there with you. Now, Peter B's, uh, bringing up DMX. We lost DMX, uh, 50 years old. Very sad, an incredible, incredible talent, incredible rapper. And, uh, I, you know, just so sad, just so sad. This goes to makes you realize, like, you know, we only have so much life, uh, you know, on this whole, um, on this planet. So live it fun, live it the best you can, and live it with friends like we are tonight. So I am, um, I am excited about tonight. Caleb is saying he's still celebrating the Baylor victory. Um, you know what? Good for you, Caleb. Good for you. I would like to know what it feels like one day to win a national championship uh, at Oklahoma State, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to taste that sweet victory. David A. is celebrating rare breed and life. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, baseball's uh, celebrating a Friday. I love that, too. Uh, Andy just got a second uh, COVID shot, kicking his tail, so maybe no whiskey tonight. But that is something to celebrate. Congratulations on getting that. Arthur's having some uh, Bardstown Fire for Pavit. Very nice. And, you know, Tim's got a good point here. Uh, live each day. Beowulf Music drinking a Makers and Coke right now. Rip. Rest in peace, DMX. You got it. You got it. So let's kind of go over what this is. Again, this is a bracket style taste off. And I have some good news for you. I'm going to be doing more of this. I'm going to be finding very, very cool themes and doing brackets, uh, doing live brackets like this. And, um, you know, I'm trying to be creative with, with how I deliver content here. And I just kind of like the idea of, a, of like a bracket kind of competing against each other. So I I really, 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 really just want to have fun. And sometimes when I get, I get bored with a concept, it stops being as fun. And while I like the blind tastings and I definitely have a good time doing them, yeah, I, I, I felt like... Um, you know, people wanted to know what I was drinking while I was tasting it. And it just, I, I couldn't deliver that, you know, with what I have. So I like the idea of like doing this bracketology kind of deal. And, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But some things coming up. Uh, Battle of Totes, uh, Tote Whiskey. Basically, these are all the, all the 15-year-old products and 13-year products that we're seeing uh, in the mix. Uh, and then um, those are basically whiskeys that were brought back from overseas and big big giant totes and so this is going to be the um this right here is the first of many to come so this is the this is the mocha madness and i am basically just tasting uh in in head-to-head -head taste offs 18 18 uh, different uh uh makers marks that use the Mocha State. Now, the private selection program is very important in the history of Maker's Mark because Maker's Mark was not a brand that uh, did private barrel selections like Four Roses and Knob Creek, Wild Turkey, people like that. They actually always steered away from it because they didn't want anything that they put out to really be better than, you know, Maker's Mark. Uh, and they also had this belief that, uh, you know, what they have is the best they've got. And they created uh, Makers 46, basically in celebration of Bill Samuel's career. And as they were getting all these requests and demands to, uh, to, to, have, a, um, to have a private barrel selection program, 
instead of doing an actual single barrel, they worked with, um, they worked with, uh, I would say, um, a, a cooperage to create little staves that would, that they could stick inside a barrel. And so they're like a thousand and one different combinations that you could come up with and they, you could blend it and create it in a, in a lab. Uh, at Maker's Mark. It's an incredible experience. You can go on my Twitter feed and see pictures of people doing it. And it's just, it's a really great time. You can see more about how it is done in yesterday's live stream. But now let's take a look at uh, how people did or, or what what is in the taste of tonight and um, who won yesterday. So let's uh, watch a quick video on what happened yesterday. <laughs> Right, so our first matchup tonight is going to be the 11 seed versus the 3 seed, Aviary versus Bayway Liquors. Aviary is an incredible, famous uh, cocktail bar, um, and they are known for having great palates, and people open open up their very best for them. So they would have gotten uh, they would have gotten you know the, a great team uh, on the process of uh, selecting this um, this barrel pick. So. They're a glass 11. Oh, boy, that smells so good. I mean, I, butterscotch. Butterscotch and like a chocolate pudding. Really tasty. Bayway, Bayway is uh, is an iconic liquor store in New Jersey, known for having some of the best barrel picks in the world. Incredible palates there at Bayway. Well. I think that um, while number 11, number 11 is like loaded with butterscotch and creaminess and chocolate pudding, there's a beautiful complexity to the Bayway uh, pick. 
the number three that I'm not getting in 11. That's just kind of like lingering on my tongue. It's kind of curling up underneath, like a little bit of like butter. And it's just uh, really just absolutely excellent. Hey, by the way, big shout out to Traveler Guy. He's our latest member here in the YouTube community. And after this, we are going to have a members-only call-in show. And uh, Traveler Guy is going to get to have the opportunity to, to call in. So exciting stuff. But three, Feiwei goes on to the next round and you can see the board behind me let's pray I do this right all right so Bayway right there going to the quarterfinals so congratulations to Bayway I don't think that's a surprise to many who know how good of a job they do there so now we're going to go to four versus seven. So this is uh, Churchill's in Washington versus Grandpa Toddy's in Ohio. The 12 seed versus the four seed. The 12 seed really layered in a lot of toffee. nutmeg toffee cardamom uh ginger pear very um uh, very all over the place four churchills oh, this is smelling very fruity kind of got got some grain notes in there today too i don't recall picking up grain on this one last time Four is uh, kind of flat um, on the palate. It's a little bit astringent. Now, I really recall really liking this yesterday. So I talk about this a lot. You know, as a taster, you taste um, one way one day and another way another day. And today, uh, this is not on point for me. And again, it's not the whiskey. It's me. So just like... Um, just like, um, it, you know, uh, any kind of athletic endeavor, the things that you do the day before, what you eat, how you slept, can all have an impact on your on your taste buds and what you're picking up. And uh, uh, four is absolutely flat for me, but 12 has a uh, crazy kind of uh, complexity to it that is like, hey, it's spice over here, it's sweetness over here, it's bitterness here, it's uh, butter there. I mean, it's like it, it's kind of running the gamut, but the way it's hitting the palate, it's like not all at once. It's kind of like snap, crackle, pop, boom, 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 and then it's out. But uh, at the very least, though, I can say uh, with certainty that 12 is a better taste tonight in the tournament. So we have an upset. We have an upset. Grandpa's toddy out of Ohio is going on to the next round and Churchill's out of Washington which I was very high on yesterday is out so let us put the uh, grandpa's toddy Grandpa's toddy right here. Taking out Churchill's. All right, so now we go to our top two seeds in a face-off. Um, number seven 
seed of Whiskey Magazine Liquor Barn is going to take on uh, the 21C Hotel Museum. My friend Shay Beckley uh, picks the barrels for 21C. He has an amazing palate. And my friend Brad Williams picks the barrels for Liquor Barn. So in a lot of ways, this is a... Uh, this is a, a battle between two friends. I should have texted them earlier tonight saying, hey, you guys are going to be facing off. Seven is coming in pretty woody. Smells like uh, smells like a lot of uh, a lot of wood. And tastes like wood too. It's like a dustiness, like a dusty woodness. Not looking good for um, for liquor barn. Not looking good at all. Uh, it's right time says love the board. Thank you very much. Big shout out to Allison for for making this and uh, to the, my UPS store for printing it. They do a really really good job. Uh, Crump Crumpler sipping on some uh, an ABC selection of Maker's Mark. All right. And Kurt uh, Colson points out to hit the like button. Actually, that does really help me with the algorithm. This is a this is a slow moving um, episode. You know, there's not as much enthusiasm of uh, Maker's selections as there is say Weller. And so, you know, we don't get the same amount of viewers on this, but I love doing things that I love and I'm passionate about them. But if you hit that like button, it can help cycle the algorithm within YouTube. And maybe somebody who wasn't, you know, expecting to come over tonight is hopping on YouTube and, whoa, what's going on here? So the more you chat, the more you hit like, uh, the more, you know, you all kind of like share the link or whatever, the more it will help other people find tonight's episode so let's go to the 21c that is so good there's a nice almond almond kind of note in there um it too it's a little um it's got a little bit of woodness in there but underneath the woodness is like layers of sweet i'm gonna go back to seven and i i really do appreciate all you all coming in tonight um this is such a fun time for me and youtube is like where is kind of where i kind of regain my footing after the pandemic so this channel is uh is so important for i guess you could say kind of like me kind of surviving the pandemic yeah going back to seven I'd say that astringency is definitely powerful. Two. Two is going to be your winner. So Liquor Barn. Um, no, I'm sorry. Not No, no. Um, two is the 21C pick. So 21C advances to the next round. And so now we have our one seed, Warrior Spirit, going to go up against Big Cedar. This should be interesting because I really loved Big Cedar yesterday. I want to know where my palate is today regarding regarding big cedar all 
right, here we go. And I know Kurt Coulson's watching this. Nervous, because this is his pick. Mm. Boy, Big Cedar sure coming in really chocolatey, really honey centric, really floral. Some nice, uh, some nice citrus in there. Oh my goodness. Wow. Big Cedar out of Missouri. Butterscotch City. With like notes of like marzipan. Uh, creme brulee. You know, pie crust. Number nine is complex, beautiful, and everything that I want to see in American whiskey. This might be an upset. This might be an upset. But, like I said last night, I uh, I drank this with Miss America in Washington, D.C. You know, so there's always a chance. Like, there's, like, this special kind of, uh, um, like, trigger in my brain. Like, oh, that was a really great time. Oh, uh, I think uh, I think I like that one more. You know, so you never know like what the subconscious will play. Nose is kind of muted. Just a kind of just a hint of like um, like rye toast. You know. Well, this was my top seed because I had tasted it before. Many times I drank a whole bottle of it. And it was really, really great uh, every time I had tasted it. Um, but it's just not in the same league as number nine. Like, if this were if this were a basketball game, this would be like a twenty point victory for uh, for Big Cedar. So number one, the one seed goes down. The one seed is out. Big Cedar with the big win. Really. Really liking that. Okay, so Big Cedar. Big Cedar with the upset. Big Cedar with the upset. And I dare say that is a major upset for many reasons. One, it is for the USO. And you all know how passionate I am about the USO. You see those boots behind me? Those are the boots I wore uh, when I was coming home from Iraq. And the USO made me feel at home. It made me feel like I was back in... And it's, it's those little moments when you come home really can make the difference. So for me to try to, you know, to remove my own bias about something that I really care about, you know, that that is I don't want to say that's easy because it's not, you know, because I, I want to bring attention to the USO. But I also got to be honest in um you know, even if that means going against something, you know, that I'm really for in, in the tasting. Like yesterday, I kicked out my own barrel pick. So, yeah. <laughs> Goes to show you where my loyalty is. Uh, okay, so our first one is three versus two. So these two, uh, so this is, um, 
This is Bayway versus 21C. And so these are the these are the top two seed, you know, top two seeds remaining. The other two are a nine and a twelve seed. You know, and I did the seeding, I did the seeding on this one, but I think maybe for future ones, maybe I have the uh, YouTube members uh, do the seeding. What do you think, YouTube members? You down for that? You down for uh, for uh, for seeding these for me in the future? Might be the best way to do it. Uh, it looks like we have a really nice uh, question. Uh, uh, I may be asking an obvious question from its right time. Uh, there's never any, uh, you know, any question's a good question. But what was the drive motivation to focus on Maker's matchup? So Maker's Mark has gotten rid of this, um, has gotten rid of the, uh, of the stave that basically created and made these special to what they are. And that is the mocha stave. And so once I learned that they were getting rid of the mocha stave, I kind of was like, oh, man, I got to do something. And I wanted to pit like all the, you know, the mocha stave uh, that I could find and uh, in the taste off. And so I came up with 18. And that is the motivation. So these are basically going to be extinct. Oh, man, this bay way. Oh. The Bayway is so yay yay. Woo! Mm. So the compl complexity of the of the bay wave like knows no bounds, and I just love the mouthfeel of it. It's like butter just dripping on down the jawline, and there's spice there. There's sweetness. It's all over the place with goodness. I like it a lot. Daniel asked the question, uh, "Why did they ditch it?" Um, you know, really, they kind of like they're in like this track of innovation. And in like when you have something that everybody wants all the time, you know, it kind of, I think, takes away a little bit. And also the Mocha Stave is very powerful. And so like, you know, I think they just kind of, they came up with a, a new stave. And hey, I mean, Maker's Mark is, they put a lot of thought into what they do. And Jane Bowie is a great friend of mine. And um, I'll tell you, you know, like she kind of pioneered this program, kind of got it, you know, it's her baby. And if she says something, it's got to go, it's got to go, you know. So that's how I feel about her. And uh, all the other things that you have been doing has been pretty great. So, uh, glass two. Uh, Glass 2 also shares like a complexity. Um, it's very sweet. It's very caramel driven, very butterscotchy, some vanilla, obviously, and fruit. Uh, there's a citrus note in there that I don't get in 3. But these two track very similar on the palate. And I'll be darned, their, their, um, their stave combo is very close. So... Um, this has uh, two 46 staves, seven mocha staves, and one SP1 stave. That's the 21C. And then the Bayway has uh, three 46 staves and seven mocha staves. So, Crump Crumpler says, I wish Maker's Mark would do some extended releases. I bet it would be remarkable at 10 years old. Uh, actually, the truth is, Crump, that... Um, they used to do this overaging uh, tasting in their in their uh, shops, and um, as 
as people got more wise to American whiskey and started tasting more, they started liking the product that was overaged. I had Bill Samuels with me at the Kentucky Derby Museum for my Legend series, and he brought us some twelve-year-old, some twelve-year-old Maker's Mark, and I asked the audience, I was like, "Would you like to see a twelve-year-old Maker's Mark?" And they, everybody raised their hand, and and he was like, "Ah, you guys, that's bullshit." <laughs> It was funny. It was funny. Um, uh, Eric asked a question. I don't think people understand the staves. Do they sit in the barrel for a certain amount of time? Uh, yes. So they will actually have a... Let me see. I can show a quick... Um, actually, I don't have it. it pulled up. But you basically... You have a... Let me... Let me let me grab a photo and show you what the staves look like, all right? So I'm going to grab a photo here and talk you through um, the staves. Okay. Okay, got one. It's going to look weird for a second, and then I'll move it over. Okay, so these the the little slats that you see those are staves and each one of those staves are treated a certain way so those are basically stave inserts so they treat them a you know based on you know they'll they'll cook them uh, they'll toast them they'll char them they'll actually even cut grooves in them and the whole uh, uh, had a had a whole um, yeah, they do a lot of things that make that wood, you know, create a different whiskey every time. And <clears throat> they will put the, when, when you're doing the tasting, you're in a room together with your friends and you're tasting Maker's Mark that had a 100% of a particular stave in it. So you see on that ring, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have 10 staves there so when you're in the maker's mark tasting room the process you'll actually be tasting uh barrels that have been storing 10 mocha staves or 10 46 staves and so you get and then you blend the combination of them to see what you would like best and once you get once you kind of get your combo down so you like uh six mochas and two cuvées and two uh, 46s. So they will they will uh, put your combo on this little plastic ring, you know, and fasten the barrel shut, and then they will store it in their in their cold uh, cellar area. And if they don't store it in somewhere that's cold, uh, the heat will be too like powerful on it. And there is um, all kinds of all kinds of things that the stave that can happen to the stave. So they had to create a special cellar area just to store these uh, these private picks, and so they would not be as um, saturated, if you will, by the stave. Now, with that said, um, they aged them for I think six months. Now that is one that I am not one thousand percent on. Uh, I think it's four to six months, but you know, once it's done aging, they then bottle it and put your name of whatever you called it on there. I did one with Lou Bryson and Chuck Cowdery and uh, uh, Michael um, uh, Thiech. It's uh, called um, um, we called it the Curmudgeons because we complain about everything in whiskey. So that's what we called it. Um, is uh rye time says is uh, roasted french mocha the stave we're talking about tonight or is it just a regular mocha yeah it, that is the sto stave that we are talking about tonight and they gave us when you do a pick you get a little you get a little binder here like this so i'll actually what i'll do here i will read to you exactly let's see where's where's the mocha Where's my mocha page? Mocha. So it's it's French oak. It's uh, a classic cut. So there's no 
Uh, there's nothing, you know, added to it, uh, like no grooves or anything like that. And then uh, it's cooked in a high convection oven. And my notes from the basic one were oak, marzipan, chocolate, um, brown sugar, and a mouthfeel explosion. So now those were my initial notes of when I first did this in 2017. So, all right. Uh, I got to make a decision here on two versus three. I like three's nose better than two. Three's going to be your winner. Uh, this was a very tight one, but Bayway, Bayway will be going to the finals. So congratulations to Bayway for making it to the finals. Now let's go to our other quarterfinal matchup. Grandpa Toddy out of Ohio and Big Cedar in Missouri. This is where, when I start getting serious, right? Now, the next question from Eric. This leads to my next question. Could someone just not age barrels in each one stave and then send them to a slushy machine for bottling? Well, I suppose you could do that there, Eric. But you would, uh, you would have to... Um, You'd have to label it differently. I don't, yeah. Number nine. Wow. Big Cedar just keeps keeps on getting my tongue like a woo. This is one. This is one that's like they're tied going into halftime. They're they both have uh, different strategies. Uh, nine is like the three point team, and um, twelve is um, is is like the big man team. You know, they they go they go inside a lot. Just a different, uh, just a totally different style of whiskey but in the end there's something really special about this uh this uh big cedar and there's something very special about uh about the bayway liquors so uh big cedar is going to go on grandpa's toddy is out looks like alan c just joining the house how you doing alan good to see you thanks for coming what you sipping on today I'd love to know. So here we are with the finals. So big cedar. You can see behind me uh, the the finals. We have big cedar versus Bayway Bayway Liquors. And just a reminder, members, uh, everyone who is a YouTube member, we're going to have a call-in show 
where we, you know, I give you all a link and you can call in and we just kind of chat and talk about stuff, what's going on in the world. I'll be honest with you. This big cedar is just grabbing my tongue and it ain't letting go. It's just saying this is the taste and it's how it's going to be and it's where it's going to stay. This is absolutely exceptional. Um, one, uh, one cuvee, eight mocha. And one uh, P21, P21. Wow. Uh, Craig asked a question, where is Bayway Liquors located? It's located in New Jersey. And um, it is one of the most um, well-known uh, bourbon stores when it comes to when it comes to barrel picks, they do a great job. They really do a great job. So three is got this, um, it's kind of got like this movie theater, you know, candy smell. There's like a note of cola there now. But the wood, the wood is, is kind of there in the back burner. There's a beautiful bitterness that kind of comes in like a, the back of, um, the back of a walnut. You can just feel that, that bitterness kind of grabbing hold of the back of the tongue. But... It is a really back of a tongue, uh, front of the tongue bourbon that you can still taste in your throat. A lot of people don't know this, but you have taste buds in your throat and you can still taste when it's in there. One more pour on Big Cedar. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to track uh, how many points on the palate that uh, Big Cedar hits. And I will tell you that this is where, as a taster, I am, I am now going in that phase where I am in love with this personally. I really, really love it. But I also do not taste and pick things just based on what I love. I still have a process, uh, you know. And this is the part where I, I try to see how many points on the palate it's hitting. And so I've been able to really uh, ascertain that the number three, the Bayway Liquors, is a back palate. Uh, it's very powerful in the back palate and the throat. It's very powerful on the tip of the tongue, a little bit on the sides, but very, very little in the middle. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on where nine is hitting on the palate instead of just like being in awe of like oh my god it's got marzipan oh it's got marzipan you know i mean listen i'm a marzipan nut you, you, we know this this is not news so especially when there, something has that note in there i gotta really be careful so i'm not picking something that no one else in the world would like number nine
It's basically just walking all over the palate like butter. It starts at the tip of the tongue, walks itself back, gets in the middle, just kind of drenches down, curls up underneath the tongue, and then pops back up on the back of the tongue. Spice is hitting, just a little bit of hitting the roof of the mouth. The mouth, the mouth feel, the movement of of uh, uh, big cedar is just just amazing, and so your champion, your Mocha Madness champion, folks, is Big Cedar, coming out of Missouri, and you may recall they had the upset of the tournament, knocking off uh, Warrior Spirit, and here they are winning it all. So, congratulations to Big Cedar. I have no idea where that is or who that is. I just know it's fucking good. So let's get the um, applause button out. Congratulations to Big Cedar. Now, let's go ahead and just like uh, do some rapid fire, uh, rapid fire um, uh, questions. You know, if you guys got any questions for me, just let me know. But this is this is a night where I really want to spend some time with the members. Uh, so the the question and uh, answer period won't be too long. I want to get into the member call in show. And if you're not a member, the way you can become a member is you see the join button there in your uh, on your laptop. Uh, there are other ways to if you are on a uh, if you are on the uh, phone. There's another way, you know, you can look in the community. You'll see membership. You know, there's a tab at the top of my channel that says membership. So if you click on that, you'll find it. Uh, the recipe for a uh, big cedar, uh, P21, Cuvee 1, 8 Mocha. So the cuvee is French oak. It's uh, infrared, and it has the it has the grooves cut into it. P2 is American oak, low and slow in a con in uh, in a convection oven, and it is a classic cut. So P21 cuvee one mocha eight mocha eight. So I feel like this was. This was an amazing exercise for me because I I'd actually I'd done a lot of these um, maker selects picks and every one of them that I have done I've ended up not liking them you know when they get bottled uh, I like somebody else's better like so I have like I get major major maker pick envy when I taste other people's makers you know it's really really weird I remember Bill Thomas and I. We were going around in like uh, Bill Thomas and Jack Rose. We were going around and tasting other people's stuff. We're like, yeah, that's better than mine. Yeah, that's better than mine. And I think it's like this is this is the one exercise that we have as uh, whiskey geeks to actually literally create our own whiskey. We really create our own whiskey. Whereas like you know you go to another distillery, you're just picking a barrel. You're picking a barrel. You know, and sometimes you just get three, you get five, six, maybe twelve if you're lucky and you know there's nothing special other than the fact that they rolled out a great barrel for you and you happen to taste it there in that moment so i think that's why makers is so special is that you get to create your own thing so i'm a big fan of what we got here in this glass big cedar my goodness my goodness that's so good well those questions are going to come in i'm going to go ahead and uh, break out we're going to head on over to the members community and we'll get this party started over there with the call-in show and i've got some people i'm expecting to hear from i'm i'm looking at you i'm looking at you uh crump crump's new to the game better get in on it Uh, Banker Griff asks, uh, how would staves work in high rye versus the weeded, like makers? In other words, the stave impact on weeders or more. Um, you know, I think I, I think that the original intention of 
the the original intention of Makers 46 was to add some spice to it, and they didn't want to change the recipe, so they created a uh, uh, friend they created French oak staves and French oak has nine times the tannic acid as American oak which is what the majority of the bourbon distillers use I mean everybody it's what they use and and so by by putting uh, French oak in there to something they actually created something that added a spice layer you taste makers 46 up against regular makers mark it's night and day night and day Absolute night and day. Um, hey, Doug is back. Doug is back, but he's at work, not able to join us in the party here. Crump says, uh, watching Frederick, Ralphie, and various others, I get serious FOMO. Here's the deal: when it comes to when it comes to this, um, you know, if I didn't get to talk about it. And I was just writing about it. It would just be work. You know, this is fun for me. And it's fun for me to get to interact and chat with people like this. But there was a time, you know, when I was just writing. I mean, there was some potential burnout there. Because you're just like writing in like a vacuum. And like, you know, it's published. And then someone sees it or they don't see it. And, you know, this is the sort of thing that I really started kind of gravitating toward. And it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that the pandemic brought me to this, you know, to be to make this more of a, a a main thing for me. But everything happens for a reason, you know. Like tonight's uh tonight's call in show. Oh, I can't wait. We're gonna call in. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Fred Minnick Channel's call in show, members only, where you dial one and you talk all day. Okay, that sounded better in my head than when I said it. But listen, I've been sipping some whiskey. So everybody, thank you all so much for, for tuning in. I am stoked to uh, chat with the members in the call-in show. I miss the members so much. So I'm going to be putting the uh, link to the call-in show here very shortly. Please remember, folks, to be safe out there. No licking handrails, no licking trash cans, and remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers.